All right, guys, welcome back. This video is going to be really, really important because the things that we learn in this video are going to be used in almost all of the apps that we are going to create and all of the apps that are created using Kiwi. So in this video, we are going to learn about the layouts. Layouts are basically a way for widgets like buttons, images, etc. to be arranged in a very particular way. You can think of layouts like containers that contain boxes of buttons and other widgets arranged in a particular manner. And this is going to get more clear as we go further along this video. There are eight different types of layouts in Kiwi, but the main layouts are box layouts and grid layouts. We'll be learning about box layouts in this video. Just like the name states, widgets are arranged in boxes that fill up the whole app window. So for example, if we create two boxes using box layouts, the app window will contain these two boxes and nothing else. So let's get started with a very basic example. So first let's try and just add a simple button. So we'll be importing from kiwi.uix.button our uh, button functionality with a capital B. And to add this inside our app, what we do is we just create this button variable over here and let's just call it btn for now. And we'll be using this button functionality and we'll be giving it a text of let's say button one. And what we need to do now is return this button should show it on the screen over here. So this is how you create a button on a screen. So let's run this main.py file and see if it works. Obviously you guys already know how to create a button, but I just wanted a, like a quick refresh over here. And now you can see there is this big button that is covering the whole screen. Now what if we wanted to add another button over here? But as you can see, we can only return one button over here and not two buttons. So what if we created another button? So for example, let's copy and paste this over here and let's call this button two. And what if we wanted to show this button two on the screen? There is no way right now to show it on the screen. And that is where layouts come in. So what we are going to do is over here, we are going to import this layout functionality from Kiwi. So what we are going to do is we are just going to write from Kiwi and this functionality is also in UIX and we're just going to write box layout and we're going to import the box layout just like we did our button and then we need to create a widget of this box layout so we're just going to write layout equals to this layout is a variable and then just like we created a button we just like box layout and that's pretty much it and then we're going to add both of these buttons inside this layout so what to add this button inside this layout widget what we do is we just write the layout name so in this case it's layout variable and then we write this function of add widget and where do we want which widget do we want to be added inside a layout so we want both of these buttons so we are going to do them one by one so first we need to add this button widget inside our layout and then we are just going to copy and paste this again over here and let's add our button two and instead of returning just one button we are going to return this whole layout so let's return this layout and if we run this uh, program over here you can see now you can see two buttons over here so as you can see there are two boxes that are being created with a little bit of spacing in between so these are the two boxes that i was talking about in the starting of this video that using box layout you can differentiate or divide your screen into different boxes now what if you wanted to create a third button let's see how it looks so what we can do over here is just copy and paste this and create our button three and if you open up our uh, screen over here you can see these buttons are being created in a horizontal way so first button was created over here and then it moved horizontally in the right direction and it created button two so if you want to create button three we are just going to write button three and also we need to add it inside our layout so we are just going to write button three and reload this and button three should be added in horizontal manner so you can see button one is there button two is there and button three is there what if you wanted to add them vertically so for example the button one should be here then button two button three and that is known as orientation so if we wanted to change the orientation from horizontal to vertical we need a parameter inside box layout known as orientation so you just write orientation make sure you don't uh, spell it wrong otherwise it's not going to work and then inside single quotes we're just going to tell it to have a vertical orientation by default it has a horizontal orientation so now that the buttons are created vertically now you can see that there's some spacing in between each of these buttons what if we wanted to increase the spacing that is between each of these buttons and increase this black area that is known as spacing inside layouts so to increase the spacing we are just going to put a comma over here and, and add another parameter over here of spacing and just uh, give a value this is in uh, pixels so if we put it as 10 is going to have a little bit of more spacing between these buttons 
Now just like spacing which gives spaces between different buttons, what if we wanted some space between our window and all of these buttons and that is in Kiwi known as padding. If you have done a little bit of web development you already know what padding is but padding is basically giving some space between our root window and these widgets that are inside this root window. So how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You just add another parameter of padding and you give the value in pixels. So I'm just going to give it a value of 40 and see how it looks. So you can see now there is some space between the root window and all of these widgets that are inside this window. Now because we'll be doing most of our app creation in mobile so what if we decrease the size of our screen so this kind of looks like a mobile right so we can test how our ui looks by just decreasing the size but it's very really, uh, hard to just just kind of resize our screen again and again with the mouse so what we are going to do is we are going to fix the size of our window so how do you do that it's pretty easy just like you used to change the color of our background first we need the window package from kiwi so we're just going to write from kiwi dot core dot window and uh, we are going to import this window functionality and first let's change the background color to white so it's kind of a refresher you just do window dot clear color and then you put in the values of uh, the colors that you want so because we want the white color we are just going to put in 1111 and let's reload this and see if it works so now the background color is white it's already looking a little bit better now let's change the size of our screen to a more mobile size and how do you change the size of a window which is pretty easy you just write window dot size and then you give the value of x and y of whatever the size you want now you can choose the size of x and y of any common mobile phone if you're using an iphone just find out it's x and y what is the size of the screen and then you can just put the x and y over here but what i have seen when testing mobile phones is that the 360 and 600 works like charm so if we reload it now you can see that the window size will automatically be resized to this and then you can actually test how our app is going to look on your mobile phone so now let's try and create a basic starting screen for our mobile apps which will contain an image and a login button and we are going to do that with the help of our box layout so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to remove all of this uh, extra stuff from over here and I'm going to add a uh, image functionality so let me just uh, copy this here and paste this over here and import this image functionality with a capital I and let's add an image we already know how to add an image you just create a variable of image and then you provide the source of that image by using this image functionality and then using this source parameter and I've already added this cute.png that we use in the image video the last video so we are just going to put this q.png over here and then I'm going to add a button also. So let's create a button and uh, this is going to be some kind of login button like it doesn't need to function properly right now but it just need to be shown on the screen. So I'm just going to be adding a button over here and we have to make sure the spelling of the source is correct because right now it's not. I just noticed. So it's uh, S-O-U-R-S-C-E. And then over here, I'm just going to add a text of maybe login. And then we need to add both of these things inside our layout widget. So we're just going to write layout dot add widget. And then we are going to add our image. And we are also going to add our button inside the screen. So let's just copy and paste this over here, add our button. And let's uh, let's reload our main.py file and see how it looks. Stop and rerun. So you'll be able to see that some of the screen contains our image and some of our login button is over here. So you can see that this button is actually taking a lot of space which is not very nice because our button needs to be a little bit small and we already have a little bit of spacing and padding that is making this look a lot more better so for example if we remove this from over here and reload it you'll be able to see that this button takes half of the screen and this image takes half of the screen but just by adding the our default spacing and padding this is looking a lot more better but what we want to do is uh, let's actually increase the size crease over here. So what we want to do is that we want to shorten the size of this login button and we want to center it in the X axis properly. So what we can do is inside our button over here. First, let's try and give it a size hint. So size hint is basically a functionality using which you can decrease the size and maintain the aspect ratio of that thing at the same time. So for example, if they give the aspect ratio as 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5, that is the half of the screen and we reload it and see how it looks so for example if we increase the size you can see that this button is taking the half of the space of the screen obviously if we remove the padding because padding is 10 pixels 40 pixels over here so it's giving an extra space actually let's remove this padding from here right now and let's also remove the spacing so that we have proper information 
So now you can see that it's properly taking half of the screen and but it's not in the center right now. So what we can also do is we can give it is a position hint. So we are going to write position underscore hint and this will not be a tuple and this will pause a tuple over here. But this position hint is not going to be a tuple. It's going to be kind of like a dictionary inside uh, brackets. So we just want to center it in the X direction because in the Y direction it's already centered. So what we are going to do is we are just going to write center underscore X and this is going to be covered with single quotes. So make sure you add single quotes over here. I'm going to remove the extra single quotes over here and it's going to tell it to center it at 0 0.5. So let's reload it and see how it looks. So now you can see that's it centered in the X axis and it's looking pretty good, but the button is still too big. So we have to decrease its size somehow. So let's actually add the padding and the spacing again. So let's uh, add the spacing and the padding and it will start to look a lot more better. So let's reload it. And now you can see that the button is over here. So let's actually decrease the size of this login button a little bit more. So let's make it 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. So this will look a lot more better. And you can see that this login button is not that bad now. It's looking uh, pretty good. But you can see that when we decrease the size of this button. So for example, if, our, if we are seeing this application on an iPad, or some kind of tablet, this login button is gonna look like this. But as we decrease the screen, so for example, if our screen is of this size, this login button looks really, really bad. And that is because we are using the size underscore hint over here, which decreases the size of our button as we decrease the size of our screen. So our app and our login button is gonna look different in different mobile screens. So what we want with this button, normally this size underscore hint is very useful because we can just create this button once and it changes size everywhere. But over here is not useful. So what we are gonna do is write none over here. That is, we don't want to use this functionality and we are gonna add also in the Y axis that we don't want this size hint. And instead of that, we want to fix the size of our button. So how do you do that? You just write size underscore hint, none, none, and then you give it the width and the height. So I'm just gonna write width equals to right now, I'm just gonna give it 100 pixels. And in height, we are gonna give it 50 pixels. So let's reload it and see how it looks. Obviously there is some kind of error. We already put a comma over here, so need to put it again. So let's format everything properly and reload it. And hopefully this time it will look good. So now you can see that if we change the size of the screen, the button size doesn't change and it looks good on every kind of screen size. So now you learned a little bit about responsiveness. So basically responsiveness is how your app looks when size of the screen changes. Does it look good on a desktop software? And does it look good on an iPad? And does it look good on your mobile screen? So all of these three things are looking good. But you can see that this image and this button is not really at the center. This, this image needs to be a little bit more at the top and this button needs to be a little bit more at the top. So what we can do is we can increase the padding. So what we can do is we can just make the padding a little bit more, maybe like something like 80 and reload it and see how it looks. So now a login button a little bit up, but our image is still not that up. So what we can do is we can just increase the spacing between the login button and our image. So let's increase the spacing to like something like 100 and reload it and now you'll be able to see that this image is a little bit more up. So now look, this looks like the perfect starting page of our mobile app. Obviously this is just a starting, we need to learn a lot of things, but this is a very good starting point for our box layouts. So in this video we learn about box layouts. In the next video we are going to learn about the grid layouts and how we can use columns and rows to create our layouts. So I'll see you over there.